we were not given any notice. We only went for a meeting on Friday and it was abrupt. We just said we were talking well. All of a sudden they said that the minister has approved it and they're coming for demolition. Trade more estates. There are already reports. The minister needs to look through that report and look at the areas where government needs to intervene. These are the things we are asking. Demolition should be last option. Between option A, B, C to Z, Z shouldn't be the first. Demolition for me is the Z. So the minister should look at A, B, C, up to Y before it comes to Z. There are families at a minimum of five family members in a house at a situation like this, in a Nigeria like this. Where do you want them to go in 48 hours? It's pathetic, it's painful, it's worth shedding tears. We shouldn't do things like we would say we do it in Nigeria. This is Nigeria. Nobody cares, nobody bothers. Whether the people dies, it doesn't matter. There should be something called empathy. Empathy means that you feel the pain the next person is feeling. We are already going through gruesome economic pain. We are going through hardship that this economy, this government, or whatever at cost. But however, you must put human face to situation. I think it's not true that uh, what we're giving them is just 48 hours. All of you are aware of uh, the issue of flooding around the trade mall uh, estate and so many of pro problems attached to uh, houses built on uh, floodplains at the trade mall estate here. We have been on it for I think about two to three years now. Many buildings there we are marked. Uh, we assess the situation and discover that there is the need to actually uh, free up the area around trade more and save lives. Most of the things we talk about that involves trade more is about saving lives, it's about flooding. It's not about the issue of giving you. If we said, okay, we, we, we have marked buildings before for removal and we are coming to this point now to actually say, let's give you a final marking, that can be 24, that can be referred to as 48 hours marking. And the main thing we must all understand here, flood will not give you one hour. The day the cloud is darkened, the day the cloud releases the rain, it falls down and the flood comes and life is taken again at that area. Nobody will ask us uh, why. But I think for now, the minister is so committed to actually cleaning many areas around Lukogoma, trade more, and several other areas of, uh, uh, the, the, of flood disaster. I want to clear flood, stop flood disasters in those areas. So we, we did not just give 48 hours. Most of those properties you see have been marked two years ago. So mark about over a year plus ago. And there have been series of engagement with the people. Even I think we even had one on the 13th. Look at houses. You asked the developer to come and do things. He had, look at, he did a thought force. It was part of the report. We don't exonerate the, the developer. We are not exonerating him. But however, we say that if you check his work, has he done the things you ask him to do? If there is a pass mark, then give it to him and do yours. Have government done theirs? No, there's no pass mark. The ecology road, the road that was done by ecology, at the gate of phase two there, they did a very shoddy job. They made the water flow from up that way down to our gates, and there is no enough passable channel for it. And when the water comes, it starts building up to Trademore Avenue. That is what affects the houses, in even the police station. Then we said that it is government that did that job. We cannot tamper government's job. Government needs to come back. We went to National Assembly. National Assembly said they will contact the FCT minister. They will contact the ecology. But we have not had anything afterwards. The developer cannot go and tamper that, except he has approval from them to tamper that. I believe there are issues in engineering that once you have massive urban flooding, you need to address vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, some engineering component if you can actually control water a little. But most times, water must have its way. That's the truth. Water must have its way. That's why as the engineers are continuing to think, uh, plan and work towards giving water a very big channel to go through, there's also the need for us as humans to leave water apart. So that when water takes its course and water goes, everyone will rest. That's the plain truth. Sometimes people will be struggling with retaining war to wedge water. And when the water comes, both the war and everything are gone. That, that's for my own end. Yes, interventions will be made. But as long as we understand the, understand the situation and discover that that cannot stand the test of time, we will not risk People dying. It's flood disaster here. It's what we are discussing is flood disaster. Residents of the estate are certain that flooding is coming. The flood we had this year is very early flooding. And we are shocked that as early as even May, 
why the corns are even about to sprout, the, disaster, the flood disaster have already started. So we are expecting heavy volume of water as the rain continues. Now let's say Friday, when they called for meeting, we never knew that the, the, the meeting was meant for to announce to us that they want to develop. They made it sound as if we are coming to bring in ideas and views. We presented views to them. But at the end of the day, it was summarily told to us that this meeting is for demolition. Oh, keeping us on our ways. And by Monday, markings of houses started. Look at all of us. We have work we were supposed to be at now. But we can't leave this situation for 48 hours for us to be confused. Our children are in school. Where do we start from? These are the issues we are talking about. And we want government to please, we are not protesting, to please look deeply into it. It's not just about sitting in the office and concluding that the report you got is permanent. No. The, 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 the reason why is when you are dealing with flood and mitigating urban flood, you must be bold to tell yourself the truth. You understand now? When FCTA, when FCTA through Development Control Department came there to mark, the flood even up to tomorrow, even up to the next 10 years, is something that we will be understanding as a city because urban flood is something that happens all across the world. When we found structures that impede on the free flow of water, we continue to mark them because, one, most of the structures there, if not very many of them, don't even have building plan approval. They don't have building plan approval. That's the fundamental truth here. They don't have building plan approval. That means the planners did not go there to study it, to say, look, okay, you can build here. But whatever it is, we are all human. They have built. We are looking at the one that we give free flow of water. And most times when the, the meeting held on the 13th, we are shocked that they, they had to come in. And, but at every single point, the entire water corridor, if you even look at the houses, most of them have been deserted. Most have been deserted because they knew that once the rain starts to fall, they will go home. You are in the office, the cloud gets dark in the morning, 9, 10 in the morning, you start to rush home. Is that the kind of place you want to live? No building plan approval for you to build and somebody build and sell to you and you just... As you can see, our residents are gathered in, in concern and in fear. Uh, development control were in our estate um, yesterday to be specific, to mark houses that, that are supposed to be demolished. Now, the concern is this, from the papers, we learned that 23 houses were approved, but yesterday, from the count that we did, over 96 houses have been marked. The question now remains, where, why 96? And that alone has created fear in, in our residents. And um, yesterday also, from the information that we got, an elderly woman in a house you know, that came to, to rejoice with her son, who delivered, who, whose wife delivered a new baby. Seeing that the house, the, the son's house was marked, she, she, I mean, slumped. It took a lot of uh, residents coming around to, I mean, resuscitate her. And now residents are concerned. The FCT minister said 23. And now we are having above 96. And we also learned that more houses will still be marked for demolition. And that has created a lot of fear and concern, I mean, to our residents. What we are saying as residents is that we are pleading with the FCT minister. He's a good man. He's a father. Let him look at this. The developer have done one or two things that we feel okay, that will take care of this issue. That please... We are pleading, I'm pleading of the, of the, of the race that let him look at this again. Let's look at these things that have been done. Will it take care of the issue? As I've said earlier, demolition may be the last option, but it's not the, the best option for the residents.